Join us for the best Canadian university men's hockey teams playing for gold. Four days, eight teams, one cup. Just one. You can cut the tension with a knife. <laughs> it's taking place at Historic Maple Leaf Gardens, Toronto's uh, original home of hockey. Get your tickets and group discounts for the U Sports Men's Hockey Championship March 14th through 17th. That's like next week. Uh, you can check it out. We're going to put a link below in the description. Uh, you can cheer on Toronto's TMU Bold on March 14th at 7 p.m. Also, Artem Duda who is the second round pick of the Arizona Coyotes will be playing in this game. Hey, TMU wanted... is having the greatest hockey season they've had in the history of their university. So they're on an absolute heater right now. And I hope they just win, was it three games and win the championship? It'd yeah. be pretty cool to do it at home. Now, now Jesse. Yeah. Uh, it, it says on the script here that we feel free to mention that you guys are alumni of the school. Yeah, well, I'm a dropout alumni. Yeah, I don't know if that uh, counts. We got two and a half. <laughs> but, me, Steve, me and Steve graduated. Yeah, if there's one place that's know, that knows hockey, it's this one. It is the U Sports Men's Hockey Tournament. Let's start the show. Jesse Blake. And everybody's here. And so is Sid Six Zero. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. Filling in for Steve today. Thanks, Maddie. But <laughs> <laughs> Roaring applause in the room. Um, Steve is on uh, Zoom for the first couple minutes here. Uh, we were just, you know, going over really important data like how did your Alex Barabanoff video fair over the course of the pandemic <laughs> things that sid loves that and simon benoit you looked it up last night right? hundred thousand views on the simon benoit acquired because <laughs> i think in the middle of him taping that i sent steve a text and it said we better fucking have a video on simon benoit <laughs> and we did <laughs> and we did and everyone was glad you know what's always great is um the comment saying who cares under a video with six digit views <laughs> yep. Get wrecked and lol. <laughs> um, so how are you? You know, this is your first appearance in becoming a, a girl dad. Yeah. Which is I'm just a, girl a dad. dad now. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a dad and then there's a girl dad. Like I, now I get it. It's okay. I get it now. I used to not get it, but I get it now. I'm a girl dad and I'm better than. Mm -hmm. That's right. Like, That's right. Obviously. Obviously. Of course. Yeah. Of course. No, um, the, um, the difference between baby two in 2024 and baby one in 2020 is unfathomable. <laughs> it's uh, like, I think Isla has already seen her grandparents. Well, her grandparents have seen her. I don't know. She, she hasn't met them yet. They've met her. Um, uh, she's already met her grandparents more times than Leo did in the first two or three months. Like it's, it's not even comparable, and uh, we already have a lot of answers to questions. And I mean, it's still, you know, getting hit with a freight train of sleeplessness. But uh, it's uh, it's been a completely, completely different experience. Uh, how's Mrs. Dangle? How's she doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, you know, uh, that hos <laughs> that hospital bed was pretty rough to sleep on, but uh, you know, I made it through. And uh, no, she's good. Um, <laughs> she's good. This this was um, uh, an easier process than the first one, and um, and uh, she's recovering really well. I was just telling her this morning, your color is beautiful. <laughs> I just remember. Sorry, Jesse. You no, go, 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 ahead, go ahead. I just remember the video that you put up. Like the rest of us remember when when Leo was introduced to all of us, and yeah. <laughs> yes, the Lion King bit happened, <laughs> and like just just you know what it meant. For to be a, a, a parent for both of you and the way you laid that out for mm -hmm. like my wife was in tears. I have no soul, but my wife was in tears watching that. And I just to watch your family grow. I just, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic, Steven. So we're just, we're elated for you. And I'm happy now as we approach the postseason. you're already not getting sleep before the postseason, where you will get less sleep during the postseason. It just kind of, that's okay. Into each other. You know what? Um, you know, because because the the uh, ugh, on TikTok they call it a fertility journey, which <laughs> stop that. It's a terrible <laughs> name for it. It's terrible. But you know, we we had a really hard time starting our family, and uh, you know, you you can't be picky about timing. But you know, we got pregnant with Leo, and we were so happy, and we're like, oh my god, 
that works out perfectly. He's going to be born in late June or early July. I work in hockey. She works in education. She's a kindergarten teacher. And we're both going to have the summer off, and it's going to be great. And then for the first time in human history, the playoffs were in August. <laughs> um, so, so like, to, to have a kid right before the playoffs, like, even though Leo was born in June and Isla was born in March, they're born almost the same distance away from the playoffs. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's no no different over here. No different. How I've does Mrs. Dangle feel it. about you leaving her and ditching her on Friday to come in here and talk about Sam Carrick getting traded for a fifth round? Pick? <laughs> <laughs> Like is 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 talking about that trade worth uh, not seeing Isla's fifth day on Earth? Uh, I think if I were to tell her that Elias Lindholm was flipped to the Leafs in a three-way deal that involved Alex Ovechkin, it would have the same impact as Sam Carrick getting traded for a conditional fifth. Conditional, yeah. Um, you know, uh, she. Uh, I, I guess. I just hope she doesn't get a speeding ticket on the way to her parents. Like th that's that's basically it. <laughs> you, you you think she's gonna be alone? You think oh, she's no, gonna be alone? No way, not a chance. She's not gonna lift a finger. All right, she might lift a few fingers, but mm -hmm. she's. Uh, don't worry, we got uh, we got a great support system. We're we're super lucky. That's great. Well, we know that you're actually about to make a video right now, uh, so <laughs> we'll let you get to it. What are you making yep. a video on? Can I can I ask? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, uh, Love is Blind season, uh, whatever this. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're uh, we're gonna do one on the Anthony Mantha trade. Oh, uh, big to Vegas. Oh, blockbuster. Oh, man, Fifty percent. <laughs> that is a blo Hey, oh, oh. Second you guys forget where you? No, no. This is a fourth. Big deal. Full video. You fuck them. <laughs> second and a fourth. It's a big deal. Do it. It's a big yes. fucking deal. It's a big deal. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wish people in sports would stop being like, this trade deadline is going to suck ass. Why don't you just tell people to shut the channel off? You know why it's why a big you deal? Tell people he's going to be their, their He's going to be their barber chef, for God's sake. He's going to walk in there yeah. cold and be the guy we're all like, oh, only the Leafs had a second. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Only the Leafs Thank you. Thank you. The way to pay the bills there, Sid Sixero. Thank yes, you very there much. Is. There he is. There's you Daniel. get it. There's Dangle. So we, we got... We got that trade, and also, whoa, hey, hey yeah. now, Erasmus Sandin contract extension. Whoa. whoa. We're going to talk about that, and then tonight when um, Eight Jake years, Gensel doesn't get traded. What's, what's the amount? Uh, I, dude, saw I, five, I saw five yet. at something, oh, okay. and, I, I, think it's and I almost keeled over times, when I saw it. Five years <laughs> times four million bucks, yeah. Oh. I'm more interested in your Sandine video than Mantha. Me too. Because I don't know what the Caps are doing here, with respect. Well, you better thank your lucky balls that it's going to be one video. <laughs> there. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Two for one. Sandine should Two. be its own. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, do it. Split sure. them up for me. Up Split for me. Split them up. Split yeah? Them up. Yes. All right. Great. For sure. And Barabanov? For you, it's going to be 20 minutes. There you go. There you go. Steve Dangle, everybody. Steve Dangle. Girl dad. Better than you. <laughs> better. I get it now. <laughs> Bye, Stevie. Well, that was fun. Uh, Sid Sixero, thank you for coming and joining us. And so Sid's not just doing this episode. He's also doing the VIP episode where we get really wacky and crazy. And the great thing is Sid uh, has also done breakfast television this morning. So, okay. so we get you at like 4 a.m., Sid. Yeah, essentially. That's how are you feeling? You all right? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Like there's food's coming. Yeah. yeah. Courtesy of my friends here at the SDPN. Mm -hmm. I'm good. We like, can say what it is. It's Mary Brown's. It's Mary Brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's no heaven's food. Yes. Um, Listen, I, we're trying to get them as an advertiser, so you can go say Mary Brown's all you want. I, I'd love I, to have Mary Brown's. I on know there. some people. I can help you. Okay, well that'd be um, great. <laughs> they, I I don't nap, so this is fine. Like I'm not a napper after the show. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to nap. I'll never sleep well doing that, so I'm fine coming down here. And and this is my first time walking through the SDPN studios. This is a great setup. You guys I love what you have going on here. Lo love what you did with the play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised it's your first time here. For some reason, I thought you'd... I know you came to my house when we had it in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, good, the basement show. <laughs> I was a big fan of the basement show. But but I thought you'd been here for some reason. No. We, we're celebrating a year, we think, this week. We didn't even think about it, but you yeah. asked, and we're like, oh, yeah, it's like this week. It's been about a year, yeah. yeah. It's honestly what, you know, a lot of people listening and watching haven't had the opportunity to walk through this place. It's It's... 
I'm really proud of what you guys are doing here. Like this is, it feels like home and you can record in every room in your house in your home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It's, it's, <laughs> there's a gaming studio. There's like other studios out here. I just, it's a great spot. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. I know you're growing every day. But it, just to see it is is outstanding. Is it weird? Can I hold the mic? Yeah, like you can do whatever you want. Okay. We can detach that. You can just hold the mic by its thing if you want. Whatever you want to do. I just your um, headphone level good. Yeah, like, are you good? Get comfy. I don't need to be pampered. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I'm know you good. came for your big fancy TV I'm job. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about today, Sid? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I, thank you for the invite. No, because I know yeah. Steve has got a lot going on, and uh, CJ, God bless CJ, he was in this week. Yeah. So I, I, I've been looking forward to this since last week since you texted. Me. What was in the A block this morning? Like, what was the most important story that you guys hit? The A block. There was... Uh, Is it going to be I, like crime or you something? You mean in the news part of the show? Or yeah. Like when Meredith Shaw and myself get to... New, oh, there was, a, there was a, a homicide. Okay. There was a homicide. We won't dive deep on that one. Yeah. yeah. What about like the entertainment portion? Oh, the entertainment. <laughs> you and Meredith. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about today. The, the oh, fun- I'll tell you. Dakota yeah. Johnson is basically backing away from the disaster that was the movie Madame Webb. Which, yeah, apparently it's considered one of the, it's like up there with Gigli is like one of the worst movies of all time already. Appar- like it was the, ro- appar- the critics Rotten Tomato score is 12. So Wow, the, that's high the, actually. Co- <laughs> some people thought it should be lower. Yeah. So Dakota Johnson is like, you know what? Uh, too many, too many boardrooms getting involved in movies nowadays. And oh, wow. Board- so like threw it on the executives, the movie executives. And said, I don't know if I'm going to be a part of something like this going forward. And I don't. It was just a stream of bullshit because she's a terrible actress. <laughs> she is. She, well, I saw the you Fifty think, Shades movie. They're not good. You th- yeah. You put anyone in that role on Fifty Shades. They weren't watching for Dakota. They were watching for the the whippy whippy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, yeah, the guy who would Not be in jail bag. if he wasn't rich. Yeah, I always contend right. that that character would be in jail if he wasn't rich. A hundred percent. Yeah. People were really drawn to that role. Why? The Certain whippy. things. Yeah. <laughs> Not the Meryl Streep performance that took place in it. <laughs> so Dakota. So we had a, like a long conversation. And Meredith Shaw is amazing. We had a long conversation about nepo babies and this mm. and that. And we went through the list of of Nepo babies who were actually like really good, like Zoe Kravitz and Adam uh, Wilde, Adam yeah. Wilde, yeah. Sophia yeah. Coppola, yeah, the, na- the the huge names in our industry. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm right up there. The huge names. <laughs> but but and also, sorry, it's the 30th anniversary of the Spice Girls. Oh. Today, uh, t- I think like this today or this week. Sometimes we cheat it if it's this week. Uh-huh. We just say this week. if we miss the day. Right. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sometimes we screw up. Oh yeah, today. but we it's I th- but I think it's today. Well, I got to say, they had uh, a huge effect on my childhood. Huge, like, that was my awakening. Let's be honest. Uh, that was like, I was like, wow, girls, huh? Cool. And, uh, and, I'm awake. And, and, 100%. I, I will, uh, yeah. And I'm 14 years old. <laughs> I was, I think I was like nine, nine or 10. And I was like, oh my, wow, this is crazy. And I, I actually, my mom took me to see them uh, at the Molson Amphitheater back in the day when it was called that. And uh, I was so short, I had to stand on a chair to actually see the stage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Ginger That's Spice good. had just left. So it was like, you know, a whole big drama thing. But um, are you, um, how are you, how, how much actual sports do you get to do on, on BT? Like, do you get to, do you get to, do they let you kind of go off on that? Or is yeah, it occasionally. Some, yeah? Like, it's not, I don't have the space, obviously, I used to. But it's, you know, when there are things to discuss. Mm-hmm. And, and lately, it's been when seasons have ended is when they've given me the most space and when I'm at my most angry. Because, <laughs> like, we're in a weird spot where, like, Rogers owns either all of the thing or... A th- or third of the thing. A third of the mm-hmm. thing, in theory. And, you know, I do work with some people who are like, eh, kind of winning hard on that. Kind of winning hard on that. I'm like, yeah, but it's fucking deserved. Mm-hmm. Like we can't like there is a section of the population that listens to you and watches you and watches BT and whatever sports talk has become. Uh, we can talk about that, but that are angry as well. Sure, not everyone. Not everyone thinks they work for the team, and you come across people all the time. I come across people all the time when the Jays have a season and the way it ended, when the Leafs get skunked 
in five games by Florida, you're not like it's there. You have to represent some level of the disappointment. Now they go like in 2015, 16, it was different with the Jays. Those were runs where you're like, wow, that was cool. Mm -hmm. And they got close. First year, they should have went to that World Series. They should have. Yep. yep. Um, if but, David Price had been good in the playoffs, I yep. always say we, that was <laughs> randomly talked about that the Monday. CJ, <laughs> yeah. who CJ. is a an outrageous Massive, Blue Jays fan, Massive yeah. Blue Jay fan. Uh, too much popcorn for David Price that first season. Yeah, yeah. And I don't blame him. <laughs> Num nums. <laughs> I love me some Roger Center puppy and Fortnite. Yeah, a whole lot of Fortnite. <laughs> He's a big Fortnite. A lot guy. of Fortnite. Um, like when it, there are a section of the fan base, there is a section of the fan base who get that angry. Now, there's the other half that are like, you guys are nuts. Everything's great. Every offseason, the Dubas thing would drive me nuts. Guys, what are you talking about? Dubas knows what he's doing. He's great. He's got no resume of success consistently in the playoffs, but he's great. What are you talking about? So I would like you'd fight that. The Jays thing was bad because I didn't meet a lot of people who disagreed with anything that I said about no. the Jays. I didn't, I didn't meet. That was cut and many. dry. What are we doing here? Yeah. And if they, if they, I mean, you could do that now. Oh, you could do that yeah. right now. Like they're lucky. <laughs> so you're you're in on Shohei Otani and nobody else. That was, but that was like Otani wasn't even like I've heard Jeff Blair make this case on air, and I agree with him. Otani wasn't even a baseball decision; it was a business decision. Sure. Like not paying or offering Matt Chapman nine figures, which I don't believe at all happened. I think that's a ridiculous floated report from the Jays. Like, that's a baseball decision. Otani, that Friday, for three hours, <sighs> changed the city. Changed it. It would, and imagine if he came. <laughs> imagine that that continued. Imagine yeah. if that party set up by Kikuchi actually happened mm -hmm. and he inked it. And there's Ed Rogers and everyone at the dais, Tony Staffieri, CEO, all. Can you imagine that scene? That changes Rogers. You can start up one channel called Blue Jays 24. That's literally what they could have done. Live, no, no different than the Yes Network in the, in the States for the Yankees. Live batting practice, mm -hmm. live post games, every scrum, every podium. You turn Sportsnet into that. I would have bought that too, by the Everyone way. Everyone would, because the Jays are weird that way. They don't necessarily, the Jays are a lifestyle. They're not a team you follow. You, you will just blindly throw it on because that's what we do because we love baseball and we and and the Jays are who we are. So they like that the, the Otani thing was never like anything else. And I think and I I will give Rogers credit for for thinking it that way. Okay. Through jerseys, through TV, NHL deals coming up. Would it have mattered that much if Otani's a J? You're getting a million a night in yeah. April and he's not even pitching. Sorry, I don't know how we got onto this. No, no, let's go. Let's but I, I, it would have changed everything. Mm -hmm. It's just it was a different sign. So sports in the morning, though, you don't get to have the everyday conversation about some trade that doesn't really affect anything in Toronto. There, there are just certain other things like news wise. Don't get me wrong. Like, like Meredith Shaw has like leaf season ticket holder. Like mm -hmm. she's a huge sports fan. She's like, and she can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. It's just what do we? Even if we land on the sports story that day, we got we got five minutes. Yeah. And that's that is the one part about BT where our that's the only part where our success is is, is a hindrance. <laughs> <laughs> because we have sold so many spots in the show and we have so many other important as like between news and, and traffic with Steph and Frank, weather, everything else, Devo and entertainment. The show flows to such certain. You can't just stop the show, unless that story happens, like the big one, like the one we don't even want to think about. Like if something like that happens live during our show, which I haven't seen yet, aside from the Queen passing, you can't do that on breakfast television. Mm -hmm. And I'm fine with it because I like w in 2021 when I started on BT, I was. And the pandemic and doing the shows in the basement thing had a lot to do with this. But I was very much done with playing a large role in filling two and three hour shows. Hmm. I was ready to take a different approach to that. And and I, if, if it means once in a while I can't dig into the Jays and the Leafs like I used to, but they still let, don't get me wrong, they still let me. 
Um, and Twitter's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you weren't on Twitter and I, then you came back. I do too. <laughs> needed a break. Yeah. Young Jesse. <laughs> needed a break. Um, but I, I, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one thing about BT is sometimes you miss, but mm -hmm. like, I'm fine with it. Like, I was at a point in my life where going, like, doing three and two hours of just the sports and underline just the sports, I've already kind of proven I could do it. Mm hmm. And I didn't feel like it was appreciated. Okay. So I feel like I'm somewhere where it's appreciated in a mm -hmm. very different, unique, more succinct way, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. That's not a rip on anyone or anything, but like I just don't, I don't think there's, like some people I used to work for didn't realize how hard that was. Mm. Well, because it, it, it comes across as your work. Like Chris, Chris Johnson always calls it the candy store. Mm -hmm. Like, we're lucky we get to work in the candy it's store. True. It doesn't mean that it's not a lot of work. Like, I'll tell you, a guy like CJ, and you know this, CJ is working 24-7 during the season. He is on his phone constantly. He, he, he put, like, six or seven calls to voicemail while he was talking to us. What a boss. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some names come up, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. He had to put a... Stop the show. Take to, the call. Uh, he had to cancel a call from a GM on the last thursday cj show yes like live while they're recording he's like i'll call that gm back yes <laughs> if i because we can control what people see when we call them right mm -hmm. if i change my setting to bill zito <laughs> <laughs> and i call cj right now <laughs> does he pick up i think he does because i think there's a tarasenko trade in the works right now it's intensifying <laughs> elliot freeman actually just tweeted a couple minutes ago that tarasenko to the florida panthers are it's, oh. it's 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 coming down to the wire. We might actually get a trade during the show. Go. I was hoping we get something this morning so we could kind of break it down. But there's lots of other things we can talk about in 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 advance of that. And I think what's so interesting about having you here, Sid, is that you have the ability to look at at this now from somebody who's been on the inside of how sports is made, how sports how talk the, shows how the, are made, how the sausage is, made. how the yeah. And so when like so if you were on you know Tim and Sid leading into the trade deadline. Right now on a Wednesday show, you're talking about promoting the, the Sportsnet uh, trade deadline show, right? You're having people on. What are the things are you looking for? Like, what are you, what are you putting together? I mean, the way, the way Tim and I would do it, it wasn't necessarily about putting it together. Like, there were, there were years where they, <laughs> like, it's funny. It was always funny because Bob McCowan sometimes had to deal with this. You, like the people producing Trade Deadline, that is a hard show. Now you have some amazing people on the desk at both networks who can carry anything. Mm -hmm. But still, it's something you have to plan for. And you want to feel like you're including everybody. So I remember, I, I don't think I'm telling tales out of school. Like I remember like they, they always had a, like a, a discussion with Bob about being a part of this. And it was always like a little, it was a little to and fro with it. Because Bob's doing a three hour show. Oh yeah. So one year, one year they're like, "Okay, Bob's agreed to be on call, afternoon, ready to go." He sat there for like three hours, and I think they used him twice. Oh. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows anything about Bob, no bueno. <laughs> that was no bueno. <laughs> but yeah. but it's just yeah. but that's the flow. Like it's not purposely done. It's the flow of the day. If there's if trades start filtering in at twelve forty five Eastern and blah blah blah, your need, like it's like Bob was never filling in his career, but in that moment you kind of are. And there were certain times where Tim and I were, and we got it. Like one year actually, the one year the most fun I had at a trade deadline was we were kind of a fill in gap thing, but they they had Colby Armstrong in there with us. Oh, that would have been great. And Colby is just fucking amazing in every way, experienced player. Doesn't take himself seriously. Funny guy. Mm -hmm. Loves he had all the things. Great story. Colby, great story. Colby's all the things. So we just that's one of the trade deadline memories I, I have. I hold most dear to my heart was us messing around with Colby, just waiting for our someone to tap us on the shoulder. Your turn. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. And say, guys, this Nick Ritchie trade isn't happening. Can we read you <laughs> up in five seconds? <laughs> Well, you know, I think I think when we're uh, it's interesting for us because the way we're going to we're going to do it on Friday is just the way we've sort of always done it is when the trade happens, then we'll put something out. 
right? Because the, the big bot programming, we leave that for the, the big networks and that sort of thing. And I think sometimes having things in a, in a bite-sized piece is, is just easier. Mm -hmm. We're also not going to sit there and speculate for like four hours. You know, we don't, we're not calling some GM or some contact to be like, okay, is this trade happening? And then we talk about the possibility of it happening. We're yeah. not, we're just going to react to the news. That's how we, that's our arena, arena right? We're not, uh, you know, CJ is going to be with TSN, but like, we're not, yeah, like as Jesse said, we're not insiders. <laughs> so it's kind of, uh, it, it's it's sort of a different way of doing it. And I, I, I always like it because it is really fast paced and you do nothing, nothing, nothing. And then bam, it's like, okay, there's three trades and we're going to be busy for the next three hours. And that's that's how it goes. Like it's, I, I've never witnessed it from that angle where you're like on the desk desk. You know what I mean? Like it's, that is a, that is a window I've never looked through. Mm -hmm. um, but the way the way I've always kind of approached it was, you you want to be out there when the shit hits the fan though, like oh. you want to be. I don't like. When's the last big last second kind of deal we saw? Like I'm trying to remember. Like what would it have been? Last year they all happened early. Well, they I'm did, talking, but like a like a boom. Yeah, like, like the big one. Well, I know that like the Horvat trade was big last year, but was, again early. Yeah, early. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan O'Reilly, Nolachari was big for Leaf fans. Early. Again, early. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like any trade with the Leafs is going to have for a, sure have a rather big outsized explosion. But yeah, like I think what would be big is you know what we're, if we're talking about what CJ was talking about last night, the fact that Lindholm who they the Canucks gave up a ton for maybe parlayed to one of their oldest rivals Boston uh so that they can get Gensel is like a what a, that would be an explosion like, CJ's like, on a heater man see that that tweet from from CJ last night wow took off eh and I, mm -hmm. and deservedly so like I like Lindholm the first thing I thought of was like Lindholm like left his long-term relationship for the new person <laughs> that is new person and the new, there, like, and the new person's like yeah. I'm bored <laughs> and yeah, then, and yeah. Elias is just like I didn't know what I had <laughs> but like his numbers in Vancouver are atrocious they are mm -hmm. and I and the more I think about it I think part of this is Pedersen has not looked the same since that move for whatever reason mm -hmm. and like I just I don't like part of this stretch, I I would struggle with this as a GM in a big way is the chemistry, is the feeling. Like even if you know you need that third line center, even if you know you need that fourth defenseman, whatever it is, I I mean, look, Rutherford and, and Alvin are cutthroat in Vancouver. I think we all get that. But when you have this kind of feel, I don't know, I don't know about this type of jockeying. Like I don't, I don't. Gensel's different because everyone in Vancouver knows Gensel very well, so it's unique. But that Lindstrom thing is is a cautionary fucking tale to any team, especially the good ones, who want to make some hay, but things are kind of going well. And even if you don't have a ton of experience. So I I don't that that Lindstrom, the, the Lindholm thing is amazing. He has um six points in 15 games. The four goals came early. Didn't he have like a hat oh, two and two, a four and two games, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. he had four yeah. in the first two yeah. or something like that, and then that's been it. His scoring has really disappeared from that forty goal season, and well, I guess it's kind of regressed to where he was before the forty goal season. That's yeah, tough now, when you have Gaudreau and Kachuk. Yeah, and now where he is after it, and the the thing about the chemistry is so true because I feel like Jeff Jackson and Ken Holland have been the most open and honest about that, and that the Oilers have been the best team since their slump at the beginning of the season. Why would we ever add anything to mess with that? We have the best team right now. What's the point of adding? Like maybe we'll do something on the edges, but there's nothing we're gonna to do that's going to shake up this core they've been successful i would it's a great point what i would say to that though is and it's dawning on me every time i'm watching oiler highlights and seeing what's happening there is no streakier team in the league mm -hmm. if they don't catch it when they need to catch it in a month and a half in two months they're dead they're absolutely dead with this group because they that's how they roll they'll be close to the sharks to start the year and then go nuts. Mm -hmm. So which one are you you getting? I just they don't have the ability. They're like they're like a a, a a freighter ship trying to turn quickly. They can't do it. So I would def if I'm the Oilers, I definitely have to figure out 
stopping the four, five, six in a row losses from this group. And I and and, and I think you have to inject something a little bit differently. You gotta be smart about it because they've mm-hmm. they've made some moves, obviously, but mm-hmm. I, you- I don't trust the Oilers as currently constituted. The swings have been way the whiplash has been way too much. I think in way addition like Corey Perry is was perfect for them. I feel like that's somebody who's got the experience. You add them in, they're gonna play within the system. They're gonna be stable. And I don't know if it's if it's something along those lines again, like a veteran. You just get in there, but I don't think they need too much of a shake. No, I'm with. No, I'm not saying like no. They're still, you know, the bones are good. Mm-hmm. But and are we gonna? Are we? Is Skinner gonna? Is it? Were you doing this with Skinner? What, what do you are mean? We, well, with Stuart Skinner, I mean, so here's the <laughs> thing. This? I have been saying I think that that guy's their star. I said it last year. I think he's their star. Yeah. I think you. I think whatever the Oilers do, just double down on what you're good at. You're good at scoring crazy goals, um, and so keep doing that. So the fact that they're in on a guy like Gensel, I think there was some rumors about Toffoli if New Jersey was ready to sell, and I think they have to be at this point. Is Tyler Toffoli a good player? Yes. Then why the fuck does he keep moving? Because the he wanted to stay with the Flames, and the Flames wouldn't meet his contract demands. He was their leading scorer last year, and then so they traded him for Sharon Govich, who's worked out better than everybody thought. Yeah, and sure. he's now leading the Devils in scoring, and the Devils have had bad injuries. And I mean, frankly, they needed to fire their head coach. So obviously, there were some coaching issues there too. So I think I think that's why he kept moving. And then Vancouver, same thing. He he was brought in as a as a as a rental guy that they wanted to keep. And then they wouldn't meet his contract demand, so he moved on. And I think that's why you've yeah. seen And then this season, he's a UFA, and he wants the he's 31, I believe, and he wants a seven-year, six-year deal, eight-year, whatever Makes anybody's sense. going to give him. So he wants to go somewhere where they're going to give him that deal. I just find it odd a player that liked moves around that much. Yes. Do you not find that that's, weird? It's like four teams in four years. It's like a that's, lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Going back, but going back, to the, um, going back to the Oilers, they do need... Like I, 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 the moment that changed the entire playoffs last year was when Petrangelo woke up one morning and said, "I don't like how Leon Dreisaitl has two arms." <laughs> Gonna chop one of them off? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the cheapest one of. Forgive me, I don't remember every cheap playoff play last year. There's a lot. That one mattered. That he went. That guy went out there. Like Petrangelo is a lot of things. Smart is one of them. And if you're going to get a game or whatever they gave him for They that, gave him a game. He changed the series. He changed the postseason. That's what, like, that's cup mentality to me. So someone on Edmonton, if you're going to bring in whoever that is, mm-hmm. that has to start to be. So Corey's a part of that. Corey 100%. Perry, yeah. You need the arm hacker. <laughs> so that's him. <laughs> and, I and, need an arm and hacker. And the great thing is, Petrangelo, yes. you lose Petrangelo from your roster. That's a big loss. Yes. You lose Corey Perry from your roster. You'll be all right. All right. I I'll don't think it. they need Gensel. Like, that's where I look at the... I'm kind of with you. Norway. I don't, I don't think they do. What do, you, what do you think they do then? I think it's it's around the edge. Like, I think they go get uh, depth forward, and I think they maybe add another depth defenseman, but making a big goaltender move I don't think makes sense. Since, um, I was looking it up here, since uh, December 1st, Stuart Skinner has a 920, and he leads the league in wins. Like, he's been, he's been great. He's been an NHL starting goaltender, and that's all they really need. And if they get streaky come April 15th, when the postseason starts, they can go on a run and win the Stanley Cup. Like, I think they have that, that ceiling. It's just about what floor they sit at come playoff time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tim's 60th anniversary, and it's also roll up the rim time, baby! Woo! All right, we love this. So, okay, Sid. Every year, you you play roll up the rim. How do you do? Uh, I mean, norm, yeah, I I was. I'll get on mic. I was. Ta- <laughs> <laughs> I was taught the technique late in life. Squeeze the squeeze the cup together, then roll up. Then roll the squeeze and the roll. Right yeah. now, you don't even have to do that. Now it's all on the app. And here's the great thing: the all electric Volkswagen ID. Four a sun soaked Hilton vacation or some major cash because they're going to give away ten thousand dollars every single day. And you know this from PT, I think, anyway, right? <laughs> um, uh, there, this is all sponsored by Tim's Financial. This is a this is a big one this year. And so, what would you do with ten thousand dollars today, Sid Six Zero? Ten thousand dollars? I'd uh, I don't know. I'd probably go on vacation. Okay, I'd give it all to Maddie. 
Would you give it to Matt? <laughs> 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 Check that. I give it all to Matt. Yeah. Well, I Matty guess you just got $20,000. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to get all the great camera angles now. That's fantastic. <laughs> so earn your roles on the uh, on the Tim's app right now. Uh, you can get roles with hot coffee, iced coffee, breakfast sandwiches, loaded bowls, and more. And make sure you play on the Tim apps. It's, it's Tim's app. Excuse me. It's available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Tim's 60th anniversary edition of Roll Up the Rim to Win oh. is now on until March. March 31st, time to get rolling. Hey. Rules apply. Canada only. No purchase necessary for contest or entry. Visit the Tim's app for details. Listen, being a sports fan requires a lot of therapy. And sometimes just life requires a lot of therapy. We've talked about better health before. And one of the things that, you know, I'm so glad that we've had this like therapy revolution. When I started going to therapy, I was like 18 or 19. And like, you didn't talk about it. And luckily, I was I was matched with a therapist at the time who has been spectacular, been my therapist ever since. And, you know, we go through times where I've got to see him more and times where I don't have to see him as much. Um, but a lot of people don't get matched with somebody right away that they can vibe with um, and don't have necessarily the access to it that that better health provides. Here's the thing with better help is that. Essentially, your match with somebody in 48 hours or less. If you want to do it over phone, you could do it over the phone. If you want to do it over text, you can do it over text, FaceTime, whatever it is. And if you don't like who you're working with, that's okay. They'll rematch you with somebody else within 48 hours. For as bad as the internet is at times, I feel like it's been great for mental health services like this. Yes. Where it's allowed people who aren't comfortable going in real life and reaching out to somebody to do it on online where they kind of feel more protected. So if if you want to if you want to have have a little check-in uh, or you're ready to, to commit and go, you know what? I need to go at this full board. Check out betterhelp.com slash SDP today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. I want to, uh, uh, we got the finalized Tarasenko trade. Yeah. And I think this is interesting because I think the Tanev trade, and when I tell you guys the return on this, I think, you're going to laugh. Boy, you're setting this up. Okay, because you remember the Tanev <laughs> Oh, it's got to be a first round pick. It's got to be a first round pick. It's a second and uh, a guy who projects at best to be a six seven in the NHL, like a six six or seven physical defense. defenseman. Yeah, Jeff said he hits. Jeff Merrick said he hits for keeps, and I'm like, nowhere in there did he say also good at hockey. Yeah. So I, I was concerned about that, but <laughs> they're I, not it, mutually exclusive. Yeah. That's true. They're true. Not. But I think Jim Nill sold him a little bit, and you should. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, here's here's what it is to Florida. Vladimir Tarasenko, 50% retained. He signed for $5 million. So that's two and a half against Florida's cap. To Ottawa, 2025 third round pick, conditional 2024 fourth round pick. Can you guess the condition, boys? What would the condition be? On Tarasenko? Yeah, on a, Stanley on a conditional Cup. fourth. Is he playing in North America? Stanley Cup. Is it really Stanley yeah, Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stanley he's playing Cup? in North America. <laughs> I thought it, he's had a good year. He's is he upright? Be, yeah. <laughs> That's the condition. <laughs> uh, fourth becomes a third this year if the uh, Panthers win a Stanley Cup. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Can you imagine? You, uh -huh, we upgraded 30 spaces. I have the trade from <laughs> so good. I negotiated ago. for the opportunity. <laughs> February 9th, 2023. Oh. The New York Rangers acquired Vladimir Tarasenko. This is what they spent on him one year ago. That's disgusting. Sa uh, Sammy Blay, Hunter Skinner, who is an AHL player, fourth yeah. round pick conditional, yeah. and a first round they pick. They got a first. Oh. Yeah. Oh. From oh. Dallas, but still. Oh. We'll see how Theo Lindstein works out. I, uh, wow. And the conditions on that, too, are mm -hmm. crazy. Does Tarasenko feel like a Panthers player to you? Yes. In what way? Well, first off, we know this, and it's a bit of a trope, but it's sort of true. Russians love Florida. The Russian guys love Flor Florida. They all want to play there. Like, that was a big thing. Bobrovsky was like, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, he could go anywhere. He's going to Florida. Of course he's going to Florida. Especially for 10 mil. Yeah, and, the, and <laughs> who can blame him? Yeah. Oh, I live 20 minutes from Miami. Man, that really sucks. Like, I've grown up in, I grew up in Russia. I'm playing in Ottawa. I've played in St. Louis and New York. Winter, winter, winter. I'd like some, you know, when it's February, I'd like it to be 30 degrees outside. I don't blame him for that. So, yeah, I feel like there was a magnetic pull for Tarasenko in Florida. But he didn't really have any choice. I don't think he's got a no, any no trade protection. I don't think Dorian gave him that. I hope he didn't. No, I hope he didn't. Um, for as long as he waited to sign. That would have been crazy to give him that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because Carolina was in until the end, but they wouldn't. But it is Dorian, so... Well, you Who never knows? know. Uh, you there never was go. a no trade clause on his deal. Well, there is, yeah. <laughs> so he waived it to go to Florida. So that's the other reason. Then. There you go. The reason he goes to Florida and the reason the returns low is like he's like, I'm going to Florida or I'm not going. Yep. Nope. You're bang on. Hmm. 
Dorian gave him a no trade. Oh. So here's what I heard <laughs> last outrageous. summer. Outrageous. I heard that the Carolina Hurricanes were willing to go at a four and a half no trade. No, no, like no no trade clause, like as in no clauses for a year. And I heard that the the Senators beat it by money. I didn't realize they put the clause. Yeah. <laughs> so they want to a complete no trade. It just said NTC, no trade clause. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. That is no, wild. No conditions on that. One thing about the Florida Panthers is that I think they have the best top six in the NHL. So I think Tarasenko is going to fit in somewhere on that third uh, line there. It's Verhage, Barkov, Reinhardt, Cousins, Bennett, Kachuk. Like that's your six. Mm -hmm. And then you get to add Tarasenko somewhere in the bottom six. The the team right now is the favorite to win the Stanley Cup, right? I think they should be. They're going to uh, win the President's Trophy again. The way they've played lately too. Like they've just torched. Boston was ahead by six, seven points. And they've just torched them. Oh, now, yeah. really Boston has fumbled it a bit. Mm -hmm. But, like, you have to win the games. Florida's winning the games. And, and by the way, Anton Lindell, this this guy uh, is an absolute menace. Um, and he's been playing, he's played, like, he's played almost 200 career games. He's 22 years old. This guy in the playoffs last year. I could not stand him. Could not. So, if Tarasenko's playing with that guy... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the Leafs don't have to play them till the second round. Like, we want Boston. Like, <laughs> we don't do not even, want Florida. <laughs> don't even go there. Um, but so, you're messing. But that, uh, still, that's, that's, a, you know, that's one of the best teams in hockey saying, you know what, we're going to mess up a line. Mm -hmm. I find that very interesting. Well, very yeah. interesting. I think that, that kind of underscores this trade deadline is these really good teams and they're going to add. It's not like the Leaf situation where they need something. You know, Correct. Florida is set. They're playing really well. And then they add this piece. How is that going to affect the chemistry? I'm curious. I, and, and, you know, the other thing is, and since we're talking about Florida, let's talk about Tampa. Can you bring up Tampa on, on, on uh, Daily Faceoff? Because sure. so the word is Noah Hannafin has a deal worked out with the Tampa Bay Lightning should the Calgary Flames work out a deal. So he's got the extension ready to go. And we should bring up their cap friendly too. But let's have a look at Tampa's defense as it stands right now. Okay? So you got Hedman, Radish, Flurry, Cernak, uh, Perbix, and and by the way, I think Sergeyev will be back. Oh, it's Tampa. They, he will be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he'll be back game one That's of the playoffs. That's how they roll. Um... I mean, pretty solid. And I don't know what goes back the other way, but Tampa's not in the habit of trading off their roster very often. What do you think the number would be for Hannafin on that on that resign? Well, what so, are we looking at? Are we looking at like what Stamkos would have made next year? Like eight million. That's what they're eight, thinking. Eight nine million. No, Stam I mean, Stam he, Stamkos would ask for whatever he wants, but like yeah. he wouldn't get that. But and they're strong. Like the thing is, is that I think Sergeyev's right-handed. No, he's left. So it's, I'm curious about that too. Because where does he fit in? I mean, obviously you find a spot for Hannafin. It's Hannafin, but um, where is who is playing where going into this? This is these aren't you know Tampa has underperformed by their own admission this year. They're certainly not the team that they wanted to be or thought they were, but that doesn't mean that they're bad. Uh, but you now have Hedman, Sergachev, and Noah Hannafin on the left side. So that makes them very left side heavy. Not that that affects things too much, but you, you're going to struggle to find ice time if this happens. Unless Sergachev's going the other way, which I cannot see happening. That team still, though, with Vasilevsky, man. I know. Like, I know it's been a weird year there. I get it. It's, it's you know, Aiden Hill's not always going to win those cups, man. You're going to have you're gonna have a stud who steps up again, who knows what they're doing. And... May like I, it, it feels like they're banking on it. if if defenseman is the move du jour mm -hmm. for Julian Brisebois, they're thinking the same thing. They think Vasilevsky has another run in him, and who and would anyone here disagree with that? No, no. And they also have the the probably Hart, Hart Trophy winner and Nikita Kucherov. Like the way he's separating from his own teammates in terms of just strictly points and dragging this team to a playoff spot. Who knows if he just has a an unbelievable we look back on and we're like, wow, look at Nikita Kucherov's uh Conn Smythe trophy run, you know, and that could easily happen. I'm so here's okay. Take a wild guess at Andre Vasilevsky. Now he is he did have surgery to start the year, missed training camp, didn't st I don't think he played till November. But Take a wild stab in the dark at what his save percentage is this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna say 907. Okay, league average is 903, so just above league average. Let's say 900. 
Eight ninety six. Oh, now, here's what's going to be hilarious. Are you ready for this? What's going to be hilarious is when he gets into the playoffs and that goes to a nine twenty, <laughs> because that's the kind of goalie this guy is. Just get me in, get me in the door. We'll be fine. That's what I think. I'm. I've, I feel the same with Stamkos, who's had a point a game this year, but he's like a minus twenty five. That's a problem. A bit of a problem. That's a problem. And 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 Kucherov, who is like, uh, there's, no, I don't know what you say about Kucherov other than he's so unbelievably good, and he might turn around and swing his stick and take your head off too. Hundred percent. And also, like pound, like pound for pound in terms of playoff games under an entire roster's belt. Mm -hmm. I haven't done the math on everyone. Tampa's still smoking everybody. Are they not in terms of playoff experience? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. It's not even close. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and this is not a year where they had their pedal to the floor the entire time. Like, I heard, like, Elliot for a long time, and it was a great point, would bring up, you know, the, like, the mileage is there. It's going to start to pile up. We're going to see a collapse here. We're going to see this and that. Like, our Tampa this year's Florida. <laughs> our Tampa <laughs> just going to get in there in the last wild card. Because forgive me, it's them in Detroit, right? It the is. It is. I'm, I'm not as up as I used to be. Um, <laughs> but, like, it, it's not like they've gone full bore except for one guy in Kucherov. Yep. So maybe you ease your way in. Maybe you have a different feel. Maybe it's not all about President's Trophy and Stanley Cup. It's, it's a different type of thing. Because I feel like we are all sleeping a bit on a team that has two rings in their back pocket and three cup appearances in the last five years or whatever it's been. Mm -hmm. it, it feels oddly like we're doing that. I just, I wouldn't put anything past that group. No. And, if, and if you're GM right now, you're looking at who you're going to play. And if the playoffs started today, who are they playing? Wild guess. It's Florida. The Florida Panthers. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> so the Florida Panthers load up with Tarasenko. If Hannafin goes to Tampa, that is going to be one of the best first round series we ever see. Oh, it's going to be like whoever wins half the roster won't come out of the series. Yeah, oh, they'll be dead. 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 Arms yeah. chopped all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll, just, it'll be an arms race in a different way. And it's, <laughs> I think, I think there's, that's such a, like, I mean, this is the best part about the first round is the storylines. The storylines would be crazy. Like, no offense to the New York Rangers and Detroit Red Wings, but I think even they would admit eh, Tampa and Florida. Way more exciting. I'll take some original six of that, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's Detroit, ESPN and TNT. Destroyed is sneakily better. Here's the difference, though. Florida Panthers' goal differential is plus 61 this year. <laughs> Can you guess Tampa's? My guess game is shit today, Jesse. <laughs> I had it up, so I can't guess. Uh, Tampa's? Yeah. I'm going to say plus three. Plus one. Hey. Hey. And, hey. And, and, so, so, and, and here's the thing. Like, If I told you, like the Leafs have, let's say if they have two goalies, and they and their save percentages are eight nine six and eight eight eight. Imagine how this market reacts to that. In yeah. Tampa, it's like, oh yeah, we got Vasilevsky at eight nine six and Jonas Johansson, who's never going to see ice in the playoffs unless there's an injury. Eight eight eight. We would be screaming from the heavens for a goaltender. Tampa's you don't you don't nope. hear anything. We're good. We're fine. <laughs> we're That's good. scary. You want to you want to talk Hannafin? Because <laughs> we're fine there. Yeah, yeah. So this is the this is the fun part about the uh, about now because like and CJ said this on Monday like we're talking about trades they're going back and forth with GMs now but at, as soon as Friday hits and that and and we know where everybody's moving now it's just about hockey now it's about alignment for the playoffs we know basically who's going to make it now it's going to be about who's it whom's whom home ice can. Tampa sneak in and not play Florida and be one of the not be one of the wild card teams. Can Detroit do the same? They're they're about dead even with each other right now. Like that's where it gets to. It starts to get really kind of. Can uh, can we dive in? Dive Forgive in me if you've already done this. The Justin Hall thing. What about it? <laughs> what Justin Hall thing? <laughs> What? what about it? What which part of the Justin Hall thing? I'm, there's I'm, a few. There's a few Justin look, Hall. Things. I got a lot of pods in this phone. All right, mm -hmm. SDPN is laced, and uh, I'm listening to Elliot and Jeff, and mm -hmm. I'm doing the I'm doing the 32. And the second Elliot threw in, and he whispered it. <laughs> he didn't just say it. He whispered it because he knew the bomb he was about to set off in certain areas of the internet, mm -hmm. and he said. Leafs need a right-handed shot, right? This is not my best, Elliot. <laughs> and Jeff goes, yep. And uh, Fridge goes, it was a right-handed shot who might be available in Detroit. <laughs> Jeff goes, who? He goes, Justin Hall. He goes, how, how much carnage online would happen if Justin Hall became a Leaf again? And Jeff paused and said, 
A lot of carnage. A lot of carnage. A lot of carnage. Iserman's doing something here, and it's going to be amazing. I don't know what it is. I think he's getting impatient. Mm -hmm. He's got a good coach. He's got a good core. They're young. Uh, he, there's something. Something's happening with Stevie Y. I know. He, I know he's patient a lot of ways, especially negotiating with a player. Oh yeah. But when it comes time to bring in some some peoples, he has an itchy trigger figure, finger. Pardon me. And I'm, that that could be interesting. That could be very because the Panthers. The Panthers' reality from last year is still. I think it's. I think it's more of a one off. But I think there's a lot of GMs looking at that, going, "Oh, us." Eighth, eighth in the conference, no problem. Tampa's thinking we got it. Detroit's thinking we had a couple. We might be able to have it. I think it's a false pretense. Mm -hmm. It was a very odd thing we witnessed last year, but it could stir up some chaos amongst the wild card teams across the NHL. Yeah, in a way that we haven't really seen a ton in the last several years. So I'm, and and Detroit's I'm, I'm got cap room. That too they which do. is interesting so here's the deal justin hall was signed for uh three years at 3.4 million so if you have that that is 1.7 million they'd have to retain mm -hmm. i would think the here's the problem for leaf fans and this is where it's a problem for me is that is sheldon keith's security blanket he loved this player and by the way the guy is apparently a great guy like Beloved in yeah. the dressing room. I've dealt with him a couple times. He's first rate. Yeah. Okay. So he's so, a great team. So let's take that off the table. This isn't a personal attack. Here's the other issue if you're a Leaf fan. Their penalty kill isn't good enough. And so what was Justin Hall in the lineup for all the time? He shoots right. He's kind of big. Really good at killing penalties. There's a lot about it that makes sense. Now, Jesse, I think... I don't think that there's been anything that actually, other than Elliot and Jeff, I don't believe there's no. anything. That, I think, I think a lot of that is is joking around, speculation. Oh, and, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you think that was joking? You think I think great? it's a little bit of teasing man, the biggest market in you, the world. I think. Well, if it was, it was cl it was classic yeah. trolling and a, a, <laughs> applaud to both Elliot and. Jeff I think it's that. a job well done. But yeah. like, I but yeah. look, they need a right shot, D. Mm-hmm. It's just about that season where you're going to need sunglasses everywhere. Everywhere, all the time. So how about Shady Rays? 300,000 people have rated them five stars. It's a world-class product. Now, Sid, since you're here, i got to ask you, how many times have you sat on a pair of sunglasses? Um, more than I'd like to admit. How many times have you lost a pair of sunglasses? More, where, where more, do you, than, more than I'd like to admit. Where do you usually lose them? Blue Jay games. Blue Jay oh, games? A lot. Uh, yeah. I can't be the only one that goes to a Blue Jay game. And a thirteen dollar beer later, my glasses. It's because there's gone. there's nowhere to put them. Thank you. Like I, I know the renovations now they're gonna have the cup holders more in the in the one hundred level. But usually, if you're sitting up in the nosebleeds, where do you put down your sunglasses? They should. You know what they should do is have like a. You know how you in your car you have that thing that you pop and it opens up. You, put, you should have that on the back of the seats. Ooh. You know. Yeah, yeah. Get your pyro on the line. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lost and broken protection with Shady Rays. If your shades go MIA or they take a hit, don't sweat it. You've got lost and broken protection, so you are covered from day one with Shady Rays. You buy it, it's there. Uh, free shipping and returns. If you don't love your shades, return them for something hotter. Uh, in 30 days or less, no risk when you shop. And exclusively for SDP listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You head to ShadyRays.com. You use the promo code SDP. 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Again, it's promo code SDP. 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try it yourself. Uh, Five-star rated by 300,000 people. Go to ShadyRays.com. Where, where are you at with the team at this point? Like, is it because a lot of I'm looking at it as a Leaf fan, I'm saying this year looks a little different. The way they've peaked this season is a higher peak that this uh, they've never had in this Matthews era. Like they've never had a winning streak like they just had. They've never looked this dynamic offensively in all these years. And I'm a little bit more hopeful than I have been in the past years. And, I'm and really, they're tougher. And they are tougher. They're tougher yeah, they, despite like the Ryan Reeves situation in the in the fall, uh, he started off great, and then that was the weird stretch in the fall, and then he gets scratched. It's it looks like it's it's galvanized the team. There's more tough like toughness around the team, like Simone Benoit, who's been great. Um, where are you at? Like, or do you have that kind of optimism that Leaf fans currently have? You from the kind of outside looking in? I mean, it's it's stop me if you heard this before. It's a weird team because they. They do this. They do this thing. I, I, I finally figured it out this week. I'm an idiot. If their best players are scoring, they win games. <laughs> it's a weird thing with them. 
Their what is their power play? They've lost six straight to the Bruins, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought I read their power play in those games are 0 for 14. Yeah. Like, and who are you playing in the first round? And who are you playing in the first round? It's just it's the most transparent group right now in hockey. So the one thing I would say to to Leaf fans is I don't think I don't think I don't think March eighth matters to you because I don't know how much is going to change. They, this team, this team followed Dubis and Shanahan structurally to some weird spots, and you're here now. You're not going to turn anything around between now and Friday. I don't believe because you are what you are. This team is not a great defensive team. This team is lacking some defensemen. I think the goalies can surprise people. Mm -hmm. Aiden Hill won a cup. Mm -hmm. These like Joseph Wall. Now Wall has to play and stay healthy. What's he played? Less than 30 games in his yeah. life? Yeah. And yeah. Sammy's got to play healthy. And Sammy's got to play healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I felt terrible for him last year because he was never healthy. Mm -hmm. But Matt Murray didn't give a shit. <laughs> and he had to play every game. Seriously, remember that? Yeah. He was clearly... Sam's not for for a team that's like, you know what? We're going to give this goalie the day off here and that goalie here and the nutritionist says we got to do this. They're like, Sammy, get in there! Yeah. We forgot that Eric Shelgren started like 10 games for them. Yeah. Year. Eric Shelgren. <laughs> 25 year old Eric Shelgren. What a reference. Yeah. I just think, like, there's no more Lego blocks here. There isn't. Mm -hmm. You have spent your money. You have spent your pick capital. You don't have a ton of prospects. And it really, it, this is the group. So if, if any Leaf fan thinks it's going to be crazy, there's no, it's, it's not. I mean, that's that it, first round pick not. is in play if there's like a longer term. I got my fingers crossed on David Savard and that being like the magic juice that can that's solidify a first, the. That's defense. a first round pick to Ken Hughes. He's not he's not he's not letting the Leafs. Yeah. Ken that's... Hughes wakes up in the morning and acquires a first round. <laughs> that's the thing. Goes to Tim Hortons, says, I'll have a large double double, <laughs> a sausage breakfast sandwich. and I'll take your first round. pick. That's the thing. <laughs> that Give me your first round. Steve was yelling about in the LFR is. If you send a first round pick to Montreal and it doesn't work out, like they flame out in the first round, the pick gets, they get drafted. It's a good prospect. You're living that down for the next 15 years. Yeah. I mean, it went so well with Placanitz, right? <laughs> like, like, I mean, he did score that one big goal, but like yeah. it was one. so weird. To so see that's why there's, it's a little scary if you go after Savard. And it Savard is. doesn't want to move, by the way. He wants to stay in Montreal. Oh, yeah. He signed there. He's from there. Like, so that's also part of it, too, is like mm -hmm. they can. But like he doesn't want to go. He wants no. to be a part of what they're doing, and and so yeah, that's that's also a problem in Toronto. Like we saw it with Bertuzzi a little bit at the beginning of the year, where he was dialed out. We know that Bertuzzi is not staying here on a long term deal. We know that we're almost ninety nine percent sure of that. We were hoping to bring him in, have a great year, get a big fat contract somewhere else, play where you want to play. Right? That's what we were. That was the thinking, and I understand that thinking. Um, I think you need to have a guy. Who wants to to be here and win a cup here mm -hmm. and understand that here? Well, the best example of that is Ryan O'Reilly from last year. Like you oh. hate that that the uh, interview he did on TSN where he talked about how. So do I. <laughs> yeah. I hated that. What did you hate about that? Speaking speaking of what? What was the yeah? What was the where, because the inference context. the inference mm -hmm. when he left town was too much noise, mm -hmm. especially around the core four, right? Mm -hmm. But just I didn't I didn't even pick up on the core four. We can talk about that. I just I heard a guy who genuinely said, who willingly did sit downs at, at like Massey Hall for Sportsnet. Mm -hmm. Too much noise. I didn't hear that shit when they acquired him. Mm -hmm. You never hear a guy the Leafs acquire say there's too much noise, guy. I thought it was I thought it was weak. I thought it was a weak way to to exit a situation, and it drove me nuts because we're not we are the softest media in the National Hockey League, and people don't know it. I'm, like there are not a lot of people out there that criticize the Leafs, there aren't, there aren't. Well, you're not really allowed to. You kind of <laughs> shouted down. Well, but like, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, I, yeah, I, I don't like all like all the, all the the Dubas transformers are running around here saying you don't know what you're talking about for the last <laughs> seven years, and and you're like, guys, you need draft picks. You need like you see that team that just won the cup. Their best player makes eight million dollars. What do you think that means? And you get shouted down and shouted down and shouted down. And I know, and I love you guys for inviting me on because I know half your listeners hate my fucking guts. But someone out here has to scream against this madness 
of what the situation, they had to have double retention on Labushkin. Cost him a pick. Just Cost to him fit a pick. Him on the roster. They had to yeah. twist themselves into a pretzel to allow themselves the opportunity to get more Labushkins. <laughs> Is that not fucking crazy to anyone but me? What is it about this chair? I'm angry. Are you, are you thinking? <laughs> it's the Steve chair. I is feel like thinking, Steve Corral is chair? falling when they needed a printer. <laughs> he likes to move around, so you can lock that Oh, I, I can feel it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's taking some abuse. It's taking some abuse. I don't know. It's taking abuse. But like you, like this is, I, that's what bugs me about shit like that from Ryan O'Reilly, who I'm sure is a really nice guy. But it was, it gives this false pretense that we're a tough media market. We're not. Montreal is a tough Montreal media market. Eat you alive, man. Yeah. S- Martin St. Louis has another year max of this. And then they're like, bring back someone else. Yeah, we haven't won a cup. Who else is up? Yes. Who's the guy you hated who went to the cup? Oh, uh, ter- no. Oh, Ducharme. Ducharme. Oh bring back Ducharme. Now, Dom guess Ducharme. What? He's working for fucking Vegas and he won a cup. <laughs> oh, see? Perfect. Perfect. I just, that's why I didn't like that comment. Yeah. Yeah. Long, lots of long and short. I'll tell, you what I I didn't, didn't like. I'll tell you what I didn't like about it. I, and, and it, it, it it rankled me because uh it rankled me because I'm I'm a big proponent of this is a game that does have some issues in terms of future. We have like Sean Fitzgerald wrote an entire book about he called it what like when the lights go out about how ho- minor hockey is down in Canada and how leagues that were once thriving like when I was growing up and Jesse's growing up when you were growing up and now they're they're shutting down mm-hmm. because it's too expensive because people are in other sports because the the nature of the country is changing too we have uh populations here and cultures here that are into things like basketball and soccer and more worldwide sports rather than just you know hockey is um worldwide but it's sort of a hemisphere sport it's the northern hemisphere where you get snow right and i think we need these guys, these stars, to sell the game. Ryan O'Reilly is a good-looking, successful guitar playing, guitar playing um, uh, guy who has, uh, you know, a Conn Smythe and a Stanley Cup, and a really great resume. And he could have come into this market and sold this sport. And I know it's like, oh, are you selling? Oh, you're selling Leaf fans on the Leafs. So how hard is that? No, no, it is because Toronto also has enormous immigrant populations who you want to get in on this sport. And what a privilege that is to put on the blue and white, to be in the center of it, and and yeah, talk to the media. And that part bothers me because I feel like, you know, I'm looking, when we were down in Nashville, people, we, we had an event, 200 people show up, which is so cool. And like, and that was for the, the draft. And people drove from all over to come see us. And they were talking about how hockey's growing in the southern southern states. They can't build arenas fast enough in the states, in the in the southeast especially. So from Nashville on over to Florida, there are tons of arenas going in. You know, we've seen the the boom in California. We're starting to see what the Gretzky years actually They're meant. Going snow in California. Too. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, and then obviously we've seen what the Coyotes' effect has been. And I know that the arena situation is easy to make a joke about, but Matthew Nyes and Austin Matthews are not hockey players without that team. Correct. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm I'm looking for guys like that, a Canadian guy from the market, sell the sport. And I and that it rankled me that you know and and listen, he can make his own decisions on where he wants to go in his career. He's earned that right to be a free agent and go sign in Nashville, and that's great. But it bothers me on the way out when you say, yeah, the, the media is too much work. Because it feeds into a false narrative, which I agree with, which is, oh, the media is so hard on the players. If you look, if you go and watch a press conference, they're hard on the coach. They're hard on the GM. They occasionally ask a question that makes a player uncomfortable. When was the last time you saw a player get genuinely upset about a question and I can tell you the one I remember is it's Dave best Chuck, best Chuck yeah. and Kessel. Yeah. yeah, that's a decade ago. Or Steve Simmons a couple of times. Yeah, he yeah because Matthew he did them he met he did the Matthews Matthew COVID stuff. thing which yeah. was and which Matthews was, was right to call him out. Yeah, yeah. Ma- it was bullshit. Matt Austin was. Yeah, yeah that was, it was it was. Uh, you don't leak a player's medical I agree with information Austin ever, yeah. uh, especially when it has nothing to do with hockey. Like COVID is a. But we're talking three examples. We're talking Austin Matthews Simmons. Mm-hmm. We're talking Brian Burke Simmons. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Ber- Berkey on the way out. Again, that's 10, 2010, 2011. And Feschuk and Kessel. What else has? What else is top of mind? I can give you 15 exchanges of the New York Jets media this past <laughs> season 
<laughs> that were crazier yeah. than all three things we've mentioned. But three Toronto's the tough market. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. And, that, and I've been outside of it now for a while. But I'll go on BT and talk for four minutes, and it runs. Why? Because there's not much of that out there. And by that, I mean truth. The Leafs are not a bad team. Leafs aren't a great team. But people don't want to hear that. And this market, the suggest this market is tough on, like, is just a fallacy that triggers me in every possible way. And I, and I can't stand it. It's just not true. It's not Montreal. It's not New York with the Yankees. It's not Boston with the Red Sox. It's not any English Premier League city. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, Start paying attention to international sports. Go uh, to Bayern Munich oh right now. Oh, my God. And they beat Lazio yesterday in the Champions League, and everyone is calling them garbage. Garbage. They won, like, 11 straight championships mm-hmm. in Germany. Coach has got to go. Coach has got to go. They don't know what they're doing. Got to sell Alfonso Davies. Coach has got to go. Harry Kane's really slowing down, guys. Got, like, 30 goals. He's really slowing down now. The, the pressure here is so masked, and it's it, both, it bothers me. Because you do run into people in the business who are like, ooh, I don't know how that's going to go over. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I don't know how that's going to go. Oh, now I'm getting tweets. Now I'm getting hate too. I don't give a fuck. No one in this market talks honestly about this team over extended period of time the way you guys do and a few other people do. It doesn't exist. They are catered to at every turn by this media. Every turn. Now, it's, you can argue it's respectful, and I would say it is. And it should be. You Terry Koshan is respectful. Lance Hornsby is respectful. Those guys are respectful. They do the job. Luke Fox is a good writer. Mm-hmm. They're all good. They do a job. But in terms of commentary of this team, you don't see it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I have a problem. I have a problem with turning that notion to something it isn't. If that's the way it stays in this market, that's, that is what it is. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But it's the Ryan O'Reilly, oh, it's too, it's too tough. Can now, you know. I want to ask you this, because he did say on the way out, too, um, that... And I think he may have a point because Brad Treliving echoed this when he was hired. Yep. Brad said de-emphasizing the core, which you can't do because that's how the team's built. Mm-hmm. And Ryan O'Reilly, and I forget which interview it was, suggested that maybe there's too much attention on them. And, and again, that's how the team's built. So, of course. What do you think about those, those types of comments? And wh- how do you think... I mean, obviously, we know how that would play in the room, which is they'd probably just ignore it. But what do you think that does? I don't, you think they ignore it? Well, I know a certain few players that probably wouldn't, but I don't think they ignore a thing. I think I think the easiest tell in professional sports is when someone tells you I don't pay attention to the media. They super pay attention to the media. Guys guys who just don't even bring it up are the ones that don't pay attention to the media. Like just I do believe William Nylander does not pay attention to the media. <laughs> You know what no, I mean? Right. I don't know if he knows there's media. <laughs> yeah, he'd know? be like, like "What's the? I don't even know what's media." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which just makes him a perfect. Toronto That's Maple. why he's the greatest. Toronto I'm just Maple. sitting here in an undershirt on Swedish television. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just hanging out, play hockey. I should have showed up in an undershirt. You should have, yeah, you and a suit, have. and a suit. Like you yeah. did it at All Star too. Oh, just oh like, yeah. There are elements to Willie that I think are just phenomenal he's amazing yeah. just yeah. phenomenal great personality like i'm gonna do my thing and it's fine but i don't think there's i think there's other guys in that room <laughs> that really follow what's going on and um you know i i think you know i think you sometimes see it snap back in in a scrum setting i think you know exactly what i'm talking about i do and, I, and so here's my question then is the pressure that the players are feeling because obviously there is pressure just from the enormous amount of fans there's a scale for leaf fans that's gigantic they're everywhere they're a, a disease <laughs> in a lot of markets like ask ask buffalo or ottawa how they feel about leaf fans probably not great um uh ticket office doesn't mind them. no they don't they certainly don't <laughs> stop they they well they the the sabers tried to do the area code thing oh, that's but right. yeah. yeah and like most things they do it screwed up uh, well yeah because yeah. a lot of st Catharines and south are buffalo sabers fans correct and i so anyway I, I i digress on that one um is it is it that the players are feeling like there's such an enormous amount of fans they'll like dm you if you lose and they'll do some crazy crazy shit on your instagram you got to shut off your comments like I mean, it's nothing that other professional athletes don't have to go through on even bigger scales in other countries. We admit that. Is that what it is? Is that what they're talking about? Because people will say the media. And I often wonder, is it social media? Is that part of it too? Because that's got to play into it. It might be. Like, I, I do, 
I do think what sticks with some of the guys on the roster, like the, the, the highest paid guys, is the way it gets in town the 48 hours after an elimination. Oh, it's dark. Right? Dark. I think that, and that's where, even this past year, it was like, I'll never, you know, other than, um, forgive me, who went to Carolina, who signed with Carolina, Bunting. Yeah. Bunting, I'll never forget. It was like, I just, you know, I just still want to hang out with my buddies. <laughs> like, there's a, there was a weird kind of, like, they didn't know what was going to happen. For the first time, truly, after one of these losses, Martin didn't know what was happening. Riley didn't know what was, like, no one had a clue. Yeah. I think in that window, historically in this market, things do get tough for the players because the sp the five specific players, because of the money, mm -hmm. and because of how that power play looks in the playoffs and all the things. Um, so I think I think that's where they have. Mu they, I think it feels like sometimes they all have muscle memory based on those forty eight hours after a playoff loss in this town. That I will agree with anyone gets tough. Mm -hmm. It's nasty. It gets yeah. brutal online. And it would be different if they lost in six in an Eastern Conference final, but that hasn't been happening. And I think that's where that's where they really start to feel it. That's where it gets, those that's the only time it gets tough. I swear to God. Because then everyone three days later turns around, Shanahan says something, and people get angry at a different thing. Yep. I almost think Shanahan does it and Dubas did it like as to like take the attention off. To draw them away. Like to yeah, to take attention away off the players. But um, I, yeah, that's. I think that's the only time where it really gets them. Mm -hmm. No I'm one's no one's ever been more vocal about that than Steve about how every year is Groundhog Day. It's the Leafs lose in the first round, and then Dubis or Shanny they go up to the podium, they have their end of season, and they talk about it. And then in a week, we talk about the second round of the playoffs, and we go to the Stanley Cup final, and everything's good. Then it's the draft time. We're all excited about the Leafs again. Yeah, you know, and it's it became the same thing every single time. This past season, it felt like. Marner has this is your last chance to trade him. You know, there's a, there's a possible the no trade clause doesn't kick in yet, and um, the Neil guy Ander, that was going to trade him was like, oh, Nylander didn't have his contract yet. There's an opportunity to do something there, and Austin Matthews he's obviously going to be around forever, but his contract didn't exist. You know, mm -hmm. you could do some stuff here, and then they fire Dubis. You know, and there's no opportunity to do anything because nobody's there anymore who's going to make those decisions, and then you bring in Brad. So. It's it's a it would, this past year was a different twelve months from from the mm -hmm. Leafs elimination land. Do you guys think if Dubas was still here, in all honesty, he would have busted it up? I think I think there was a pretty good, mm -hmm. pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, from what I've heard too. Uh, pretty good chance that one of the four is gone. Obviously not Austin, and obviously not John because John's contract's just not tradable. Right. And some of that is, that was his decision. He wanted to do that going forward, but Shanahan, who is the stable piece through this whole thing... And is the real GM. ...does not feel that way, and you butt heads, and one guy has the power to fire the oh, other guy, fair and enough. he's gone. I tell you, the best <laughs> the best trade Kyle Dubas was not allowed to make, uh, and I think this has been pretty publicly widely reported, was the trade with Chicago uh, a couple deadlines ago. They were going to get... Um, they need Zach Hyman had just left. They needed a Zach Hyman. The Zach Hyman was going to be Brandon Hagel. And they wanted Brandon Hagel bad. And the deal was a first, Matt Nyes, or or if you believe some reports, it was two firsts. I don't believe that. So it was a first and Matthew Nyes for Brandon Hagel and um, uh, Mark Andre Fleury. Because remember, they had injured goalies going in. I think Freddie Anderson wasn't playing well and Jack Campbell. They were in a bad spot. Yeah. 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 So. So you get you get the experience and the vibes of Marc Andre Fleury, right? He's just he's been there. He's won three cups, been in the finals, you know, and you just love the guy. Great smile, great smile. Like <laughs> man, what a what a superstar. Great smile. STP, I will get some scoops. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> be nice <laughs> from where? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, and then and then and then Brandon Hagel, who hit, who then was traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning. You take and, him away from the team that beat you. And who ate the Leafs alive that year in that first round? It was Brandon Hagel. They got Hagel. And the guy that 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 is supposed to have said no to that trade mm -hmm. is Shanahan. And the, I uh, think it was like a couple months ago or a couple months after that there came out some other reports about how Dubis was in on that the, in on nixing the trade as well, but we've heard that differently and I don't I, I'm not I, buying that. I tend report. to trust yeah. Yeah. I've heard it from <laughs> Four or five different places at this yeah. point. It's so it's so 
every, you know, sometimes you can tell a story's got variations and you'll never know the truth because everybody's got a, a bit of a different broken telephone. Every single person I've talked to that knows anything about that trade has said the same thing. Mm -hmm. What did you call them earlier? Dubus robots? Du du the, 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 the Dubus Decepticons. <laughs> yeah, I I like that. Yeah. That's a better one. Ah! Better well, one. okay. And, and listen, <laughs> the guy had great trades. The guy had uh, bad trades. He had good signings, bad signings, like every GM does. I think the problem, the hard part for me at certain points, um, and the, the parts that I can remember taking the most shit for, one of them, and I will die on this hill because I was right, was them choosing to protect Kerfoot and Hall over Jared McCann. You got Jared McCann for nothing. And they're like, well, we won't have a right shot defenseman who makes two million bucks in Justin Hall. And I'm like, he cannot be that valuable. He cannot be that valuable. Kerfoot cannot be that valuable. And and Jared McCann has gone on to score thirty plus goals. Every Jared McCann night. last night had a great uh, shorthanded goal, and you think about oh, how how oh, bad the, the Leafs' penalty kill is, and you're like, you know, that'd be cool. I just want to die. <laughs> like there there are things like that where you go, and then and people were like, well, actually, this is good. Obviously, history has turned out differently, and there's plenty of stuff that I'm wrong about. That's just one that I feel particularly proud of being right about. I was never a big Kerfoot guy. You're allowed, I, you're allowed a victory lap on huh? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but what, I, what I'm thinking is, and, and this is, I think this is important because when I, when I watch other sports, the other sport that I love the most um, outside of, of hockey is Formula One. I love Formula One. And then secondarily and very second, like very, very close to Formula One is baseball. My mother-in-law, there's nothing I enjoy more than my mother-in-law sitting on the couch, first batter strikes out and she gets up and she goes, this fucking game and then gets <laughs> and then starts doing laundry but she like lives and dies by the blue jays every day right so that's that's her her thing um the one thing i notice in formula 1 is that if you are not performing you're out <laughs> and they have guaranteed contracts but there's no like and there is a salary cap or if you're ferrari you get a, a new job yeah <laughs> <laughs> You get gardening leave. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what they call it. Um, Ferrari is like it's it and and Mercedes is like this and Red Bull is vicious. Uh, McLaren was like this with Daniel Ricardo and a few other drivers too. It's like, are, are you performing? No. Okay, we got the next guy. And when you look at something like, and I understand that these leagues operate without a salary cap, but I'll bring it back to the NHL in a second. You you look at who are the big the big clubs in your you're talking about Bayern, uh, Bayern Munich you're talking about PSG you're Real talking Madrid. Real Madrid uh, Man City Man City yeah. uh, I would say you know Liverpool uh, right now are Liverpool having, having a moment yeah what happens when a guy on that roster isn't performing what happens it uh, it depends on what the transfer fee was but for the most part the heat is severe um, and heaven forbid a young striker goes in there and gets a couple of goals when you've had ten without then things get interesting. But it does, uh, you know, performance is important. Like I've seen, like, again, just I, we're mentioning Bayern Munich a lot in the show, but like they, 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 if they have, like Kimmich is one of their better midfielders, one of Germany's better midfielders. He's had a bad year to the point where they're just, they've changed his position. <laughs> it's like Mitch Marner on defense. <laughs> they've changed, they've said, no, you're going here now. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the national team. We're hosting a Euro this summer. Go there and shut up. That's how that rolls. And it's a it's a fascinating way to do business. Performance based decisions, who, hell of a thing. Who um, who operates like that in the NHL the best? And I'm thinking of one team. Vegas, Vegas, Vancouver, fast approaching. Van yeah, Vancouver, yeah. <laughs> his brother fast <laughs> approaching. Man, he's cutthroat. Woo! And he was like that in Pittsburgh, and he was like that in Carolina too. You're not you're not in, you're out. Um, I love, yeah, I love Rutherford for that. I gotta say, you know, as much as we gave Vegas shit when they were. Uh, cutting ties with certain players. Look at look at who they've offloaded in the last few years. The guys that they've brought in, the guys that they've moved out. Like even Riley Smith this summer, they win the cup, and two days later, they're like you're going to Pittsburgh. Like that is that's a team that operates like we're, you'll never hear this about Vegas. They did right by the player. How many times did you hear that? The Leafs ah the Leafs did right by the player. They may have told Smith like at the party he was leaving. Probably. <laughs> like at Foley's yeah. place. <laughs> the ranch, right? Yeah, yeah, ranch yeah, yeah, that's right. So we, we kind of did a weird retrospective on the last couple of years of the Leafs. What do you think of Bradshaw Living's tenure so far? Like the last, it's only been eight months, ten months? I think months it's been eight or ten under, months, yeah. Under the job. What do you think about it? I think anyone being overcritical doesn't get the job. Because hmm. he came in, like it's equivalent of the three of us getting an email saying, guys, you're running the Leafs. <laughs> 
And free agency is three days away. Yeah. And they didn't let him on the draft floor. And not that, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm not on the draft floor. <laughs> no. Now they make decisions. <laughs> now they got me. Those bastards. <laughs> I can't go on the draft Calgary floor. Calgary one, you know. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't meet the owner's son. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they're going remote this year for the draft, right? Yeah, they are. Oh, it's no. about time. Is this the last? Or maybe year? not this, year. this is the one at the Sphere. Yeah, and then oh, that's, so that's going to be. Great they're thing. doing a hey shebang, big shebang every year. Yeah, after so they won't bring forty people up on stage and yeah. thank people enough. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Bad television for the Predators. Bring back you two in the sphere. Oh, I like oh it. just for the Preds. Bono, Bono comes out and makes before the they make their pick. Bono. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> oh, let's let's make that happen there. Uh, uh, yeah, I I. He's had hits. He's had misses. Mm-hmm. Dubas had hits. Dubas had misses. Mm-hmm. Um, I I the Klingberg swing. I never understood. I never understood it. Um, the 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 Reeves thing I never understood. I know he's played better. That this th- this wave is going to end, and I like Ryan Reeves, but that was weird. And you know, I still my jury is still out on Bertuzzi till we hit April twentieth or whatever it is. I I think he's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. But um, look, Martin Jones hit big time. Maybe save their season a little bit. I think so. Um, and I think he's, I would have liked more years on Matthews. Don't tell me, don't tell me that contract's going to age poorly. Get out of here. Oh no, that contract's in. Yeah. That guy's going to, that guy's aiming for Ovechkin's numbers by the end. Hmm. Don't that, I hated that argument. It's going to age poorly. So four years of shut up. Um, I didn't like Nylander's deal at all. Um, I do like. I do like the freedom he's kind of given. Like Sheldon's needed some air cover here, because because the daycare mentality was there, mm-hmm. and he's let Sheldon do his thing, and which I is call I, out players. Yes, which I think is important occasionally. If you want to not give us a hometown discount, we're gonna fucking call you out sometimes. Sorry, sorry. Sign for eight six. I want to shut up for three years. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will not say anything at eight six. Anything. <laughs> Like, do you know? Do you notice how often he criticizes Riley on a mic? It never happens. Never. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he gave him a great deal. What was Riley going to get open market that year? Eight nine? and a half, nine. Like maybe a Darnell Nurse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Easily. Easily. I have a lot of respect for Morgan Riley, man, for a lot of reasons. But like, he never criticizes Riley because Riley did by did right by the organization. And whatever you think of Riley, I still don't think they can win with him playing twenty minutes a night. We can discuss later. But the big guys have to get criticized if they're going to fuck around. You will find out on an open mic. I do firmly believe that. So I he, he let Sheldon do that. Um. So like it's a very it's I'd say it's a C plus on Brad, but mm-hmm. like I want to preface it again by this job. Shanahan's over his shoulder looking at his homework the whole time. Still, mm-hmm. let's not act like that's not happening. And, um. I I think if the Flames were a responsible organization, they would have played ball on Tanev. I don't think they did. I don't think they they took no. The there, the, Murray Edwards apparently there's a uh, no. why would why the Leafs of all teams would have to pay a, an extra price just because Brad resigned from his job is weird. It's, it's that's yes. It's like, also not doing your fiduciary no, duty. You're like, not, it's doing, not you're not doing right by the fans. Your season ticket holders don't fucking care if you like Brad for living. They care about a first rounder coming the other way. Yes, right. they don't like it's 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 irrational. Anyway, um. The one thing I'm fascinated with, though, like the game tonight, it's a national game on Sports Night tonight. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Sabres tonight, obviously the Bruins tomorrow. I know the Leafs don't want to trade their first. I know the Leafs don't want to trade Easton Cowan. I know the Leafs don't want to trade Fraser Minton or Matthew Nyes. But to be a fly on the wall if they lose tonight and 5 1 in Boston tomorrow, mm-hmm. what then? Are you telling me someone up top isn't making a call? And they're going to sit there and go, look, if you think we're sitting here on this TV contract and the Leafs are out in six again, you're drunk. We're going we're to try our best to fix this now. If that happens over the next 48 hours, I am fascinated with what the mentality is going to be with this team and those final few cans of chunky soup 
in the cupboard because there's it eats like a meal. <laughs> eats like a meal. You can do a lot with them. You can do a lot with the yeah. cans still there. There's not a lot of cans there. Yeah. They're good cans. They're, you'll be full by the end of it. What happens if it's 5-1 Boston against them? But like mm-hmm. an effortless 5-1, mm-hmm. like one of those. I don't know. I'm not convinced the Leafs are going to. I know what Brad would like to do, but there could be some heat just to finally say, guys, why are we stopping here? <laughs> why are we stopping here? So we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Do they look at it, depending on how these two games go, which they seem weirdly very important on how the, the, they the do. club's going to make their decisions on Friday. Yeah. Like I feel like you should never just be so reactionary, but it feels like there's a case here to just react to how these games go because they always struggle against Buffalo, who they should beat every single time based on how Buffalo has played this season. And if they don't show up there, that's it's going to be such a disappointment uh, tonight. And then Boston, who you lose that stinker uh, yesterday or on Monday, whatever that was, and and then um, how, how are you going to show up again? You're, you're facing them again. Now is the time to show up. And I just give an effort. So going into the Friday, I wonder if Brad looks at it as, hey, if you don't show up, I'm not rewarding you by bringing anybody in. Or if you do show up, then we should stand pat because we're good enough. You know, I wonder which side of the coin he's going to take depending on how they show up in these next two games. I, it's a great point. Like, I think I think Brad is – look, Brad – I don't know what Shanahan's thinking with Keith Pelly coming into MLSE. But Brad Living just signed a contract. So he's thinking, I might be here for a little bit. I'd like that first rounder. Mm-hmm. I'd like Easton Cowan to try and do that with us. Uh-huh. I'd like all these things. I don't know where Shanahan's at. So I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> My next question, bef- and the last one before we go to press conference here, yep. where we ask, we, we get listener questions. Tons of questions from Twitter. Sid, your... Um, your rise started well before Sportsnet, but when Don Collins hired you guys, you guys were the mid-afternoon show on Sportsnet 590 The Fan, and then you were also simulcast. And then the Tim and Sid show, TV show, happened. As far as I remember, all that happened under Keith Pelly. Correct. Keith Pelly, in your opinion, brings what to Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment? Because you know him. Well, I'll, you worked under him. I'll tell you the story about Keith, and maybe I'll answer your question. Because when I, um, sorry, Trey. No, no, Trey no. It's no, it's it's the door. <laughs> I think it's Barry Brown's chicken around. Shows up. <laughs> <laughs> we both get the the and ring. I'm, I'm sorry, Barry Brown's chicken. I apologize to no one. No. <laughs> Because Tim and I cut a commercial with Mary Brown's right before the pandemic. I remember. Yeah. And it barely it didn't air much because like it felt weird. But we had a ton of fun doing it. Like it was a great. Oh, it was a great spot. I, we I had a it. great time with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they were a professional shoot. It was great. Anyway, <laughs> um, 2011, uh, summer of 2011, I leave the Score Television Network, and Don Collins at the Fan offers me the one to four time slot on the Fan, as you mentioned. Tim had some things cooking still at the Score. Was kind of going back and forth. I was going regardless. Tim had some things he had to figure out. And then Tim's like, the time slot's really good. It's amazing. Like, he's got a young family. Like, it's, that's, that's a Beautiful. good slot. I could have been in my car at 357 every day doing whatever I wanted. It's still the best, like, in terms of a functioning human being, one of the best shows. So Tim decides he's coming too. So Tim and I are going to do one to four on the fan station we've listened to our entire lives. This is a huge break for us, leading into Bob McCowan. Um, The score, two months later, calls me and my agent and says, you have a non-compete. Are you aware of this? So we're going to start like in September. And I'm I'm pretty wet behind the ears. I'm like, what's that? (laughs) So people who don't know in broadcasting, you leave a place for six months, you can't work in another place or... It varies from contract to contract. But this is my first time doing this. So we were supposed to start in September. And Keith Pelley is kind of running Roger Sports and Media. And you got Scott Moore running Sportsnet. And it's like, they were told we're starting in September. No, no, we got to start now in December. Does that affect the deal? So my career is in their hands, is in Keith Pelley's hands. And the message that came back was, We'll wait. 
my career could have ended right fucking there in an instant. I will always look at Keith Pelly. I can't speak for Tim. I will always look at Keith Pelly as a guy whose instincts are pretty good because I knew if we got in there, if they trusted us, we'd be okay. But he had a choice. And his career is always, like, from what I can tell, at much higher levels than our decision. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not afraid to make a big swing or trust his gut. And uh, I, you will not hear me saying a disparaging word about that man because I owe him a ton. Uh, I never got a free round of golf in Europe, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he did run the European he golf the tour. European, yep. Yep. Yeah. And never got the invite, huh? Until Saudi Arabia decided we want all of it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, essentially, it's what happened with Liv. But he's coming in. Like, again, this is the, this is the silent bomb that's mm -hmm. coming is Keith is going to become MLSE CEO. I believe it's officially. Yeah, CEO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he's not, they're not bringing him in there because he's getting a free suite for Springsteen concerts. Keith, that's not how Keith operates. So I, I like if there's a bunch of stuff tomorrow we don't expect, it's because I think there's going to be stuff early May coming with this team that maybe we don't expect. And I think it's going to be for the better. Cuz he's he's he is a man who likes to stay active in his role. Mm -hmm. And he knows Bell and Rogers very well. Um, he, 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 he's a guy who gets stuff done, you know. And was the hockey contract like completely fruitful? It's a big deal. Leafs not going past round two ever it doesn't help it. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I think this is going to be a really good thing for MLSC. Well, really he he is the last guy. The last guy I can remember who had who was this energetic was Tim Laiwicki. And that changed not just the Leafs, but it changed TFC and the Raptors as well. And what did he do? Uh, took, took some swings. Took some swings. Big he took some serious swings. So I'm looking forward. This, this, this story playing out is going to be unreal to watch. Let's do the press conference. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. All right. First question comes from out of context, Karen. Karen writes, Sid, who will win UEFA Champions League? Real Madrid. Next question. <laughs> is it that locked in? Real Madrid. Real, Jude Bellingham is a. It, Jude Bellingham might be the best player in the world right now. They got him. I barely know who that is. You don't know who he is? No, no. He's the one who's going to help England win the Euros this summer. Okay. Oh, and, you think England's going to win the Euros? I think this might be English. Oh, <laughs> if that'll Jude, be fun. If Jude Bellingham. <laughs> If Jude Bellingham uh -huh. can continue to play the way he's playing now, he's a midfielder scoring like a bunch of goals. It's like it's like Kale McCarrish. Mm. Like it's statistically, it shouldn't always play out that way in soccer. He's like it, like he walked into Real Madrid and became an icon. The last guy to do that was Ronaldo. Okay, like they are a phenomenal team. They bought a slew of midfielders who are young. It, I, I think it's Real Madrid. Love and, it. unless it isn't. But I think it's Real Madrid. This is from Colton Arthurs. What is the worst breakfast sandwich medium? Uh, bread, English muffins, or bagels? Which is the best? <laughs> yeah, the food takes. It's, what do you mean by medium? Sorry. What is like, that? I guess the, Where the delivery method. Yeah. You know? Because like, you're holding it in your hands. Oh, you don't want your fingers yeah. to get Sorry. dirty, right? The, yeah. medium, the medium is the message. That's right. right. <laughs> Thank you, Marshall. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> I watched the viewers. <laughs> Um, the worst is a bagel. It's not even close. Oh. I'm not a bagel guy. The best is an English muffin. If you if you have not had a Tim Hortons breakfast sandwich with an English muffin, get, uh, tomorrow morning, start living your life for real. <laughs> because that is the only way to have it. I have to tell you, though, number two on that, because they brought Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons is a big breakfast television uh, uh, contributor, obviously. They put uh, they put the sausage and the egg and the cheese in a croissant. Ooh! Oh yeah, I baby! I almost fucking melted. It was so good. It was that is outrageously good. Like just I put it just behind the English muffin, but the croissant breakfast sandwich, bellissimo. As All they right. Say at Tim wow. Hall. What about between two hash browns? 
No, we're then we're then we're doing the double down. The KFC. KFC. Yeah. That? No, it's disgusting. It's ridiculous. It's disgusting. Stop it. <laughs> you can't make bread out of things that aren't bread. What, have you seen those people online who do the cucumber sandwiches oh, yeah. and the bread is cucumber? They're not doing. So that they dig it out with the like bell like pepper. Stuff. Yeah, or really? bell pepper. They yeah. cut open the bell pepper and you have the bell pepper as the bread, the sandwich, and you stuff it with the food and then you eat that. That's outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm not on TikTok. Fuck that. <laughs> I don't All right. TikTok. Here we go, Jesse. Uh, let me bring up other questions. Uh, this one I thought was interesting, but I don't know how it would work. Um, would a player, this was from Adrian, would a player like Victor Wembinyama succeed in the NHL? So we're talking like somebody who is freakishly outside of the realm of the t- typical NHL player. But I think we're seeing that. With guys like Tage Thompson and like Rempe's coming in there to fight Justin more than Justin Brzeau in in Boston, like six, these yeah. guys are six seven, six eight. So Soderblom in Detroit, like we're seeing six eight, six nine guys play in the NHL now. Mm-hmm. But you think we're getting seven foot NHLers one day? Sorry, or did Sedano Chara not happen? I yeah, thought, I thought Chara already was was Weminyama before Weminyama. I think he was. Yeah, like there, like he would, he would like j- attempt to inadvertently kill a human being with his viciousness but was like a top player in every act like he did everything well right if blocks were allowed the nhl he would do that too <laughs> i think i think char is the closest we've seen we're gonna see a freak of nature though like who can skate like some of the best guys in the league eventually it's gonna happen who's way bigger than we know <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the yeah. next lindros like if lindros was born like if his career was now yeah the damage he would be do, like oh my we, god it's going yeah. to happen where a guy of that size with that with, with those feet and that skill come in the league under under these rules and just go ham mm-hmm. it's going to happen but char is the closest am i missing a name char no i think right that's the there. that's the name and i i actually by the way having shaken eric lindros's hands a few times and done some charity stuff with him and whatever I can't imagine what it must have been like for any NHL defenseman my size, and I'm 5'11", normal size. I mean, NHL standards, probably 6'2", 6'3". That guy coming at you would have been terrifying. Yes, 100%. Like, not fun. <laughs> and if so, if, if you have a guy like Wemby, who I know he, like, he's super thin right now, but he's like 18. Yeah. If he, you know, put a, you know have the guy go home and drink gravy for yes. like a whole year, just put on some pounds or something like that, and then get strong and heavy... Scary. Did I tell you the story of how at Smash Fest he bear hugged me? Eric Lindros? Lindros? I believe I unofficially broke two ribs. <laughs> he was in a good mood. Okay. And we we had interacted socially a couple times, and I'm like, that's Eric Lindros. And he was just, he gave a bear. I'll never forget it. He's, I'll never forget it. When he gets going, he gets oh, going. Yeah. He's a riot. One of my favorite people, oh. Eric Lindros. I'm not too familiar with your music taste, so Ooh. I think this question is kind of all over the place, but go ahead. Stink Face McPoop Lightning, they want to know, <laughs> what would your goal song be? Oh, classic Stink Face. <laughs> <laughs> classic question from Stink Face. Um, sorry, McPoop Lightning. I, I yeah, yeah. the lead. Classic McPoop Lightning. McPoop Lightning is his dad. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry, Mr. McPoop Lightning. Yeah. Uh, what would my goal song be? It would be... It would be something ACDC-ish, but I don't... But, like, Shot Down in Flames has been done in Calgary. Um, it would be... It would probably... Eh, Thunderstruck. The kids need to know more about ACDC. Two guitars, a bass, drum, vocal, nothing. Nothing else. Don't need nothing else. No backing (laughs) vocals. Do you know the only other instrument ACDC ever used in a song? You know what it was? Bagpipes. For what track? Uh, Long Way to the Top, if you want to rock and roll. Oh, look at these. (laughs) (laughs) I was a radio DJ, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, thumbs Fucking wild. (laughs) Couldn't let me have that one. Bon Scott, sorry. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, Bon Scott, yes. (laughs) I think I'm so cool and shit. (laughs) And and funnily enough, if you look in the video, his teeth are a mess. And and so the the they used to when they did um, before they actually made any money. um, They he used to smile in pictures, but like hide his teeth because they were worried about. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So then later on, when they got him on like the Highway to Hell album, he has teeth because he got an implant and it, it's unfortunate because it was towards the end of his right. life but yeah he was able to finally you know fix his his teeth were really really bad i didn't know they yeah. were bad. yeah 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 anyway, i made a blatant fact. attempt they're re-releasing every album on vinyl 
Is that what they're doing? And I made a blatant plea to the record company on BT. I want that. <laughs> well, I you, basically said that. If Please you go get them thing. like remastered and on vinyl, amazing, oh, 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 oh. spectacular. See. I'll keep. I'll give you an update on how that goes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. I think Thunder we're good truck. on questions. We're good there, on questions. Yeah. We got another show to record. Yes. Right? And, and Sid's got to have his Mary Brown's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> My halftime. <laughs> Sid, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun, boys. Hey, and we're doing VIP next, oh, so yeah. we're gonna have some fun. We're going off the rails. That was fun. And good to see Steve. Congratulations to Steve and the family. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't he didn't look as tired as I thought he was gonna look. I know. A little like with it. He was annoyingly refreshed. I know. <laughs> What's his problem? Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W Y L D E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.